I was born a builder. To impose upon matter born of my imagination is for me both an imperious necessity and a source of unbounded joy. Eugène Fresinet was born in 1879 in Objat in Corrèze to parents who owned a farm and a mill. As a boy, he took great pleasure in watching and helping craftsmen at work. That was how he came by his vocation. By the age of 20, he was already a highly competent blacksmith, joiner, carpenter and all-round craftsman. In later life, even after graduating from the Polytechnique and Pont et Chaussée engineering schools, he still considered himself a craftsman farmer. His dual education, both theoretical and practical, in science and crafts, had an abiding impact on his thinking. At the start of his career, he delved into the newly invented technique of reinforced concrete. After studying it and finding many shortcomings, he concluded that the combination of concrete and steel went against nature. At 26, he worked with a major contractor on a project involving three bridges over the Allier River. Once completed, the first bridge was on the point of collapse. Eugène Fresinet saw only one explanation that everything that was assumed and taught about the deformation of concrete was completely wrong. Breaching the regulations, he modified the bridge's arch. The move succeeded, bringing him recognition within his profession at the age of 31. But it also further galvanized his quest for knowledge and discovery. He puzzled over ways to improve concrete construction. Then, in 1914, the First World War broke out. Steel was in short supply. There was a need for concrete specialists. Eugène Fresinet built dozens of bridges, hangars and factories. With each project, he expanded his knowledge of materials. After the war, he continued to build, winning fame and glory by setting a number of world records in construction. In 1923, he built the longest concrete bridge up to that time with a span of 131 meters. In 1926, he undertook to build the Plougastel Bridge with three 172 meter arches. In all the structures he built, his style is unmistakable. He used concrete with little reinforcement. It was the design of the arches that supported the span and ensured the stability of his bridges but he was obsessed with the idea of pre-stressed concrete. In 1928, at the height of his fame and fortune, he decided to risk everything to devote himself to pre-stressing. He worked on it without let-up. Many people thought he'd lost his mind. Five years later, he filed the patent for pre-stressing. The method was a complete technical success and a complete commercial failure because the crisis of 1929 had occurred in the meantime. Eugène Fresinet was now 55 years old. The future of pre-stressing was compromised. What was needed was a miracle, and the miracle proved to be the Le Havre Maritime Station. The Le Havre Maritime Terminal had been built to accommodate the new Normandie ocean liner and was a showcase of French engineering. A short time before its inauguration, the building was found to be sinking by several centimeters per month. It was cracking. No one was able to prevent this from occurring. Eugène Fresinet was contacted. He proposed a solution based on pre-stressing. It was a gamble, but within a few weeks the solution proved to be a complete success. The building was saved and the reputation of pre-stressing was made. Businessmen visited the worksite in large numbers to see the invention for themselves. One of them was Edme Compenon, who quickly saw the advantages of the discovery and formed a partnership with Eugène Fresinet. In 1943, the two men founded the Société Technique pour l'utilisation de la précontrainte, 
and together they built the first pre-stressed concrete structures. Up until his death in 1963, Eugène Fressinet devoted his time to promoting pre-stressing, which rapidly came into widespread use around the world. To do what I have done, I never needed exceptional intelligence. Perhaps if I had had the intellectual gifts so generously attributed to me, I would have achieved my goals with less effort. Without them, I was unremittingly persistent. And at least three times in my lifetime, I disregarded enormous risks to take extremely bold steps. But these qualities have nothing to do with science or intelligence, which are merely tools that in themselves have no creative power. A single virtue contains and confers them, love. To young people I say, if you want to rise above yourselves and others, the best way to do so is to love your work above all else and to devote yourself to it entirely. This love will give you the strength to overcome fatigue, weariness and the temptations of vanity greed, and even fear.